After you sew on your handle, this is what your basket, your Easter basket, should look like. You can see how that craft wire that you put into the bottom keeps your basket open nicely. And then your handle can go towards the back. You could fill it with all kinds of goodies. Then your crochet baskets are ready to be filled with your favorite bunnies. I have video tutorials for these bunnies. These bunnies are made with red heart yarn and I have a video tutorial that you just use instead of the pipsqueak yarn that I show for the rabbit you use the red heart yarn. They also have the handcrafted wire in their ears so they're malleable. You can move them around. This basket is a little bit more difficult to make. It's the same pattern as the one in this video tutorial, except with this gorgeous basket, I used three Lions brand Pound of Love yarn strands and crocheted with three at a time. This one I wouldn't recommend trying if you have wrist problems because this one is a little bit harder on the wrists as you're crocheting because it's a lot thicker and a little bit of tug as you're crocheting but if you think you want to attempt this one just be aware that this one is a little bit trickier and you have to be careful take more breaks as you crochet it so that you don't hurt your wrists and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to put this together because this is going to be a gift basket for my granddaughter for this project, you're going to need your J or 6 millimeter crochet hook, as well as your tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. The yarn I used for the basket was the Red Heart Super Saver. This is pretty in pink. It's a hot pink. And then color. you can take, you want to make it sure that you have an even amount for wrapping. And then once you have the size, then you just wrap the wire around each itself like this. Just fold it over on itself. And you can see how the wire is malleable and it fits right around the circle of my basket. The ribbon that I used is Celebrate It 360. It's a very pretty glittery pink ribbon. You can get whatever matching colored ribbon that you want for your basket color that you the made. The size that I used is 3 8 of an inch. We're going to start with the main color that you want for your basket. I'm using my hot pink colored yarn. And we're going to start with a magic circle. So you're going to take your yarn, just drape it across your four fingers, and hold it in place with your thumb then just wrap it around your two middle fingers loosely and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb and that's how you're going to hold your yarn then take your crochet hook and I'm using my J or six millimeter crochet hook just go under those loops then you're going to bring up a loop and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to go back under those two loops. You're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. 
You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both of those loops for a single crochet. Then you're going to chain two. One, two. That's going to count as your first double crochet. And we're going to make a total of 12 double crochet into the magic circle. I'm only going to do four of them with you and then I'll let you finish making all 12. Just yarn over, go under the magic circles, loops, bring up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops. Then you have two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and then go through this, the two loops that are remaining and you finished a double crochet. So we are going to make 12 double crochet into the magic circle. I'm just going to do a couple more with you to make sure that you know how to make them. You can see how I'm holding my fingers as I'm working. This is my fourth one. And I'm going to make one more yarn over, go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, two loops remaining, yarn over and then go through those last two for double crochet. Go ahead, finish making 12 double crochet into your magic circle and then come back. After you finish making the 12 double crochet into your magic circle, then you can see how I'm holding my crochet hook in my hand and then I'm taking my forefinger and my thumb and I'm holding the base of the 12 double crochet just like this. Then you have these two loops on the opposite side that you're going to pull on one of them to close up your magic circle if it doesn't close, just let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing, so just gently close it. If it doesn't close all the way, don't worry, just try to close it as much as you can because we can close it more later. Then take that loose yarn end and gently close that. Then you're going to turn your work so that your magic circle looks like this. And you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into that top stitch of that first chain three. This is our first chain three. You're going to go into that top stitch with your crochet hook. And we're going to do a slip stitch. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Now is the time that you can close up the center of your magic circle. Just pull on that loose yarn end and you can see how it closes up that center of your magic circle nicely. Now we're going to get ready for the next round. For the next round, we're going to start with a chain of three. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, Three. This counts as our first double crochet for the next round. We're going to make another double crochet into the same stitch. So you just yarn over, go into the same stitch, and make your double crochet. And we're going to make two double crochet into every stitch around. So that means you should have a total of 24 double crochet when you finish this round. So go ahead, finish making your double crochets, two double crochets into every stitch all the way around, and then come back. First, I'm just going to show you so you um, know what a stitch would look like. I use my tapestry needle and here is the next stitch 
and then here is a stitch here is a stitch so you know what the stitches look like you're going under both of the loops with your crochet hook and those are the stitches that you're going to be making two double crochet into each stitch around which would give you a total of 24 stitches when you finish this round and then come back and I'll show you how to slip stitch it closed and then start the next this round. is what your work should look like so far now we're going to make a slip stitch into that top stitch of the first chain three that you made so go with your crochet hook into that top stitch of that first chain three you're going to make a slip stitch so we're going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch and you can see how that makes it into a nice circle and you're getting ready now for your next round we're going to start the next round the same way you're going to make a chain of three and we're going to make we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to make two double crochet into every stitch around so when you're finished with this round you should have a total of 48 stitches if you make two stitches into every stitch I'm sorry two double crochet into every stitch around now you're going to make a slip stitch again into that top stitch of the first chain three that you made the exact same way then you're going to chain three this time we're going to be making this will count as the first double crochet but in the second stitch you're going to be making two double crochet into the same stitch so I'll do a couple with you so in the first stitch you're going to make one double crochet and then in the second stitch you're going to make two double crochet in the same stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning so make one more with you one double crochet in the first stitch and then two double crochet in the second stitch and then just repeat that all the way around back to the beginning and then come back this is how your work should look so far then you're going to make your slip stitch into that top stitch of the first chain three that we made to join the round and this if you want a bigger basket then you would chain three and I would recommend one double crochet into the next two stitches and then two double crochet in the third stitch and repeating that all the way around but if you like the size that I made this is where I stopped and now you're going to get your wire so we can measure the wire around the rim of the circle so go ahead and get your wire and then you just want to wrap it around the outer part of the circle just to measure it and then make sure that you go a little bit larger because we want to wrap the ends of the wire around each other so once you have the size or know the size that you want then you just take your scissors and you're able to cut the wire then you just take the wire fold it over on itself and then you can take you want to make it sure that you have an even amount for wrapping and then once you have the size then you just wrap the wire around each itself like this just fold it over on itself and you can see how the wire is malleable and it fits right around the circle of my basket now 
I have the wire sitting right on top. Just place it right on top of the circle and we are just going to crochet right around the wire. So you take your crochet hook, go inside the wire, go into the next stitch. You can see how I'm in the next stitch over. Then you're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on the hook. Just yarn over and turn the hook upside down and go through those two single two loops for a single crochet. And we are just going to single crochet all the way around, covering up the wire. So just one single crochet into every stitch around and you will be burying the wire as you crochet. So I'll do a couple more with you so you can see and this is what it looks like on the other side. And you can see that I'm just covering the wire. This helps to give your basket some stability so it doesn't close down on itself. And then once you get back to the beginning, come back and I'll show you how to slip stitch this round closed and then we'll start on the next round. This is how your work should look so far and you could see how much stability that wire adds to your basket. It's really nice. On the other side, you can see how mine looks. If your wire protrudes a little bit, uh, don't worry about that. I'm going to show you how we can cover that up a little bit after we're done. Once you're back to the beginning, we're going to go ahead and make a slip stitch to join the round. So just take your crochet hook and go into that first stitch that we made with your crochet hook. We're going to make a slip stitch. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And that will get ready for the next round. So we're going to go ahead and finish this next round before we finish off and take care of some of these loose parts of the wire that may be protruding. Mine's not protruding too much, but um, it is protruding just a little bit, so I'll show you how we can cover that. But first, we're going to be working into the back loops of the stitch. So I'm going to show you what that looks like with my tapestry needle. So again, this is a stitch. I have my tapestry needle going through both loops of the stitch. Here is the back loop and then here is the front loop. Now with our crochet hook we're going to be going right down the center of the stitch and into the back loops only. So we are going to be crocheting into the back loops only. And again, your crochet hook will go right down the center of your stitch and we're going to crochet through the back loops only. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go right down the center of the stitch and grab that back loop only. You're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops for a single crochet. So we are making a single crochet into the back loops only. And you're going to do that all the way around, back to the beginning, and then come back. So I'll do one more with you. You go right down the center of the stitch, grab that back loop, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to make a single crochet in every back loop until you get back to the beginning. Now this is what your work should look like so far and I have a total of 72 stitches. 
Now, if you don't have that number of stitches, but your work looks just like this, that's okay. You're just going to have to add stitches when we make our double crochet to make an, a number that is a multiple of three. So mine has 72, which is a multiple of three. So I don't need to add any stitches on the next round. But I'll show you, if you do need to add stitches, I can show you how you would do that on the next round. But after you're finished with this round, you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch that you made. So you take your crochet hook, go into that next stitch, yarn over, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to go ahead and finish off. So just yarn over and pull enough yarn through that we can cover or sew around those wires on the back, if you have any that are protruding. Otherwise, we'll just bury the loose yarn ends. Pulled the wrong one. So just cinch down your knot. And then to bury your loose yarn ends, just take your tapestry needle and put it onto any loose yarn end. And then just weave it through the center of your work and I like to go through a couple times that way you know for sure that it's not going to come undone and then once you buried it and in the inside of your work then you can take and cut it then if you have some wires that you want to cover on the back of your basket, just take your tapestry needle and that long end that you left for sewing and then you're just going to weave it to where that wire is and mine is right here so I'm just going to weave around it just going in and out around that wire until it's covered You can see how it covers it nicely. You can barely see it. So just keep covering it as much as you want and then tie a knot and bury your loose yarn end and then come back. Now this is my basket so far. This is going to be the inside of the basket so I have it facing up and then you're going to take and go from the side and take your crochet hook and go into any stitch to start. You're going to join your yarn. So just hook your yarn and bring it through the stitch. Then you're going to chain one and then tie a knot. Then you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. For mine, since I had 72 stitches, which is a multiple of three, I don't need to add any stitches. But if you're adding stitches, say you need to add two more stitches, then you can make an extra double crochet in the same stitch here, and then make two double crochets in one of the stitches across from you. So you just evenly space whatever amount of stitches that you need to add around your circle. But for mine, if you have 72 like me, then we're just going to make one double crochet into every stitch around. So I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to go into the next stitch over, go behind my loose yarn end, bring up a loop, and make my double crochet and I'm going to make one double crochet into every stitch all the way around and then you just want to make sure that you're going through both loops as you're making your double crochet stitches around and then come back.
you should be back to where you started and you can see how my double crochets are standing up around the edge which is what I want and this is how mine looks so far and I have exactly 72 stitches on mine so it's a multiple of three then you're going to join the round so you just go into that top stitch of that first chain three that we made and then you're just going to yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook now you're going to chain three for the next round. One, two, three. And with the basket weave stitch, you're going to be making front post double crochets and back post double crochets. So I'm going to show you the first three stitches are going to be a front post double crochet. So you just yarn over and then you're going to go in between, actually I'll probably show you with my um, tapestry needle first. So you're going to go with your crochet hook into the space between the base, this double crochet where you did your chain three, and the next stitch. So you're going to go between with your crochet hook and you're going to go around the next stitch double crochet just like that with your crochet hook and you're going to make a double crochet around this post so you just take your crochet hook you yarn over you go into that space go behind the next stitch double crochet you're going to bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. You yarn over and go through two. Two loops remaining, yarn over and go through two. So you just made your first front post double crochet. And we're going to do that for the next two stitches as well. We're working in multiples of three. So yarn over, go into the space between the stitches go behind the post the double crochet post of the next stitch bring up a loop make your double crochet and you're going to do that again for the next stitch and you should have finished three front post double crochets. Now we're going to make the back post double crochet. So you, this time you're going to yarn over, you're going to go from the inside and come out in the space between the two double crochets. You're going to go in front of that next stitch double crochet you're going to bring up a loop you have three loops on the hook and you make your double crochet so you actually went behind the back post double crochet So I'm going to do that again so you can see. So I'm just going to yarn over. Then I'm going to come from the opposite side, come up between the stitches with my crochet hook. I'm going to go in front of that next stitch. I'm going to bring up a loop and make my double crochet. And you can see how it looks different from your front post double crochet and how your back post double crochets, the difference in how it looks on your basket. So I'm going to show you that again. We're going to remember we're working in multiples of three. 
So I'm going to show you again with the next stitch. Just yarn over and then you're coming up from the opposite side between the stitches. You're going to go in front of that post of that next stitch double crochet with your crochet hook. So you can see how I'm in front of it with my crochet hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and then bring up a loop and then I'm going to yarn over and go through two and then yarn over and go through two. Now we're going to make the front post double crochet in the next three stitches. Now for the next three stitches we're going to make the front post double crochet. So I'm going to try and get the camera a little closer so you can see it at a closer view. So I'm going to yarn over and now I'm working from the front. So I'm going in between the stitches and then I'm going behind that next stitch double crochet post. I'm going to bring up a loop and this is the front post double crochet. And I'm going to do that for the next three stitches. And you can see what a beautiful basket weave stitch you're creating. And you can see the difference between the front post double crochet and what the back post double crochet looks like. Now we're going to make the back post double crochet for the next three stitches. So you're going to yarn over, but this time you're going to come up between the stitches from behind. Then you're going to go in front of the next stitch double crochet post. You're going to yarn over and bring up a loop. So bring up your loop. Now I have three loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through two and then yarn over and go through two. You just did a back post double crochet and we're going to do that again in the next two stitches. So we're going to do one more. So I'm yarning over, going up between the two stitches with my crochet hook. I'm going in front of that next stitch post. So my crochet hook is actually in front of that post. And then I'm going to yarn over and bring up a loop. So bring that yarn through to, oops, do it again. You want to bring up that loop so you have three loops on the hook. And then you created your back post double crochet. So this is what your work should be looking like so far. I'm going to do one more set of the front post double crochet and one more set of the back post double crochet. So I'm going to do a front post double crochet into the next three stitches. and you're just grabbing those posts from the previous rows double crochet and you're just alternating front post double crochet in three stitches and then your back post double crochet 
and three stitches. So that's your three front post double crochet. Now we're going to make the three back post double crochets. So I'm yarning over and this time I'm coming up from the opposite side. I'm going in front of the next stitch post. I'm going to bring up a loop and make my double crochet. And then I'm going to do that for two more stitches. And then you're going to repeat that all the way around back to the beginning and then come back and I'll show you how to join the round and move up to the next round. You can see the beautiful stitch that it creates on your basket which is what you want and the sides because I have the wire in there it just holds up the sides nicely. Then I just finished my three front post double crochet and then I did two back post double crochet and I'm back to my original chain three. So I'm going to take and slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that we made. Make sure that you still have the same number of stitches that you started with. You don't want to be adding any stitches otherwise your basket is going to just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger at the top. So you want it to stay the same size every round that we work. And if you're a beginner I would recommend counting your stitches because that's where I found that beginners had the hardest trouble is that they were adding stitches as they worked and making it bigger and bigger as they crocheted. So to make sure that your back basket stays the same size, make sure that you end up with the same number of stitches each time you finish. Now we're going to move up to the next round. So you're going to make a chain of three trying to make a, find a way to get the camera because of my craft wire but go ahead and make a chain of three one two three and that's your first chain three for the next round for the previous row we made three front post double crochet so now on this next round that we're going to be making, we want to make three back post double crochets. So we're going to alternate from what we started with on the previous row. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to come in from the back between the stitches, go in front of that previous row's double crochet post. I'm going to bring up a loop and make my back post double crochet. And you're going to do that for each of the stitches for three stitches. Now the next three stitches on the previous row were the back post double crochets. So you guessed it. We're going to make a front post double crochet in the next three stitches. And then you're just going to keep alternating front post double crochet for three stitches. 
well actually I should say back post double crochet for three stitches, front post double crochet for three stitches, and now the previous row we did front post, so we're going to do a back post double crochet. And you're just going to keep alternating all the way back to where you started and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Now I'm back to the beginning. You can see how I did three back post double crochet, then I have the two front post double crochet and the first chain three that I, we created. So I'm going to make a slip stitch into that first top stitch of the first chain three and just make a slip stitch and that will join that round. You could see the cr beautiful basket weave stitch that you're creating as you crochet around your basket. Now we're going to get ready for the next round. So you're going to chain three, one, two, Three. Now on the previous row you can see how you have your back post double crochet. So for this next round we're going to start with the front post double crochet. So you want to do the, the opposite for each round of what the previous row had. So if you have a front post double crochet you're going to do three back post double crochet. And since I have three back post double crochet this next round is going to be three front post double crochet. So I'm going to make three front post double crochet. And then you can see that my next stitches the previous row had front post double crochets, so I'm going to make a back post double crochet. And then you're just going to repeat that all the way around back to the beginning and then come back. This is how your basket should be looking. You see how you have this nice alternating front post double crochet, back post double crochet, basket weave pattern. The edges are staying up because of the craft wire that's placed into it. So it stays open, a nice open basket. Now you should be back to, oh, I just messed up my post, let me make another one. So I just finished two of my back post double crochet and I'm back to the front post, I mean the chain three. So here I did three front post double crochet and then I did the two back post double crochet and then I'm back to my initial chain three. So I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three and then just going to make a slip stitch there and that will join the round. Then you're just going to start over again. You're just going to keep doing this chain three, one, two, three, until you have the depth that you want for your basket. When you come back I'll show you how deep or how many rows that I made for mine. I'm going to go ahead and start the round with you. So I look at my previous row. I see that I have three front post double crochet. So I'm going to make three back post double crochet.
Then I'm going to make my three front post double crochet. And I'm just going to keep repeating that all the way around. You can go ahead and join, chain three, and then just make as many rows as you want for the size of your basket, and then come back. After you finish making however many rows that you want for your basket, and on mine I made seven rows, after you're finished with your seventh row or whatever amount of rows that you want for the depth of your basket, after you make the slip stitch to join the round, you're going to make a chain of four. One, two, three, Four. That counts as your first double crochet and chain one. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the same stitch. So you yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, then you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through two, two loops remaining, yarn over and go through two. And that's completing your V stitch all the way around the top of the basket so you can weave a ribbon through the top of your basket. Then you're going to skip the next stitch and make another V stitch into the second stitch. So you yarn over, go into that second stitch, make your double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the same stitch and you can see how you're making a beautiful V stitch all across the top of your basket. I'm going to make one more with you. I'm going to skip the next stitch and work a V stitch into the second stitch. So skip a stitch, work a double crochet into the next stitch chain one and make a double crochet into the same stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning and then come back once you're back to where you started your first chain four you're going to make a slip stitch into the third chain so this is the first second and third. So take your crochet hook, go into that third chain, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Now you can go ahead and bury your loose yarn end and then come back and I'll show you how to weave the ribbon through. The basket. Make sure that you take the part of the basket that you finished off and place that towards the back and then you're going to start working in the front with the ribbon. So you just go in through the v-stitch with your ribbon towards the inside of the basket and then come back up after skipping one double crochet because you want most of the ribbon to show on the outside of the basket. So go ahead and skip whatever amount of V stitches that you want and then go back into the basket. You can see how you have a beautiful ribbon showing on the outer portion of the basket. Then just skip one double crochet, come back out towards the front, and then you're just going to keep weaving all through the V stitches, going in and out all the way around, and then come back. So this is what my basket looks like after I weaved the ribbon all around the, the top portion of the basket. Then you're just going to tie your bow in the front of your basket. This is what my basket looks like with the ribbon tied into the front. And then here I also made a purple one. So you can see I used a white celebrated glittery ribbon for the front of the purple one. 
Now I'm going to show you how to make the handle. The first thing you're going to do is just take your yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then take and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot and just cinch down the loose yarn end and cinch down the knot. Then you're going to make a chain of four Now we're going to move up to the next row. So go ahead and hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb and then you're going to make a chain of three. That's going to count as your first double crochet for the next row. Now we're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook which is the stitch that you're holding. Just yarn over, go into that fourth chain from the hook bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. Then you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. and that's what your work should look like so far. Now we're going to move up to the next row. So you're going to chain three, turn your work, and we're not going to work into the stitch right at the base of your first chain three. We're going to work into the next stitch over and you're just going to make one double crochet into every stitch across so that's two, three, four, and don't forget your last stitch, five. That way your work doesn't come out crooked. And you have nice, nice straight edges for your handle. And you're just going to keep doing that for whatever length that you want for your handle. So chain three, Turn your work and then double crochet back across and you should have five double crochet every time. That way you have nice straight handles. Go ahead, finish making your handle whatever length that you want and then come back and I'll show you how to sew it onto your basket. This is what your work should look like and mine is 25 rows long. Then when I'm finished with the length that I want, I'm going to go ahead and just finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through. And you can go ahead and pull enough yarn through to sew it onto your basket. Then you can take your handle and put the tapestry needle onto the long end that you left for sewing. Then position your handle, make sure that you have the front of the basket with your beautiful bow in the front and just line up where you want the handles. Best to have it going up and down like this and then position it where you want it. Make sure you know where the other, handle, the other side of the handle is going to be on the other side and then your handle will be able to fold over towards the back. So make sure your handle can go towards the back before you sew it in place. That way you can lift up the handle to the basket. Then you just take your tapestry needle once you know where you want your handle and this is where I placed mine right beneath the ribbon. and you just take and go in and out of the basket with your tapestry needle and just sew the handles in place. And I usually just sew right along the side, the outer edge and make sure you sew across the top of the handle too towards the top of the basket. 
and then go ahead and sew both sides, bury your loose yarn ends, and then come back. After you sew on your handle, this is what your basket, your Easter basket, should look like. You can see how that craft wire that you put into the bottom keeps your basket open nicely. And then your handle can go towards the back. You could fill it with all kinds of goodies. Then your crochet baskets are ready to be filled with your favorite bunnies. I have video tutorials for these bunnies. These bunnies are made with Red Heart yarn, and I have a video tutorial that you just use instead of the pipsqueak yarn that I show for the rabbit, you use the Red Heart yarn. They also have the handcrafted wire in their ears, so they're malleable. You can move them around. This basket is a little bit more difficult to make. It's the same pattern as the one in this video tutorial, except with this gorgeous basket, I used three Lions brand Pound of Love yarn strands and crocheted with three at a time. This one I wouldn't recommend trying if you have wrist problems because this one is a little bit harder on the wrists as you're crocheting because it's a lot thicker and a little bit of tug as you're crocheting but if you think you want to attempt this one just be aware that this one is a little bit trickier and you have to be careful take more breaks as you crochet it so that you don't hurt your wrists and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to put this together because this is going to be a gift basket for my granddaughter so for my Easter basket that I'm making, I went to the dollar store, and at the dollar store, I was able to get the two beautiful Easter cards, two for a dollar. This fun little Easter flower that lights up, has a battery on the back, but I'm not going to pull the tag for this one. So this will go into the Easter basket. Also, you can buy the fake grass that goes into your basket, colorful fake grass. Since my granddaughter is still young, I got her larger plastic Easter eggs so she can't swallow them. These fun play foam mats. There's a nine pack with these cute little animals on it. Then a little fun book. She's not able to color it yet, but it has these different colorful learn her colors and basic color words that she can just look at until she's old enough to color them. If you don't want to make your Easter basket, they also have these adorable Easter basket plastic tubs that you could put your crochet bunnies in and make your basket that way. This is what the grass looks like in the basket that I made. I put the coloring book and the play foam mat into the back of the basket and then I'm going to put the flower in. I'm just going to cut the tag off. Then I'm going to put the grass. Just lay the plastic eggs in. You put my cute little bunnies into the basket. And then one of the great ideas that a lady had given me, since I can't put candy into her basket, I'm going to put these, she loves these, but they're healthy treats that have vegetables and fruit. And then you can just put these into her little basket, the little colorful treats that she can have. 
So this is what her Easter basket looks like so far. You can fit a lot of nice stuff into the basket. And the last thing I'm going to show you are these cute little magic towels. So this one's a little SpongeBob one. They also have the little Dalmatian fire Dalmatian and Olaf. So those will go into her basket. The one I'm going to open for you is another SpongeBob one so you can see what the towel looks like. Then I just take a basket gift bag. I used a medium sized bag to close up everything. And the ribbon that I use is just one of the, the pretty pink ribbon that I used in the front of the basket to close up the bag. Now I'm just going to open up one of these so you can see what it looks like. We just have a towel. I'm going to try to put it in some water so you can see what it does when I put it in this the water. This is the information on the towel. I have the warm water in a bowl. Just going to put the towel in there, let it soak up. And then it just opens right up. And you have a fun towel as a Easter basket present. Really cute. One of the dangerous things about going in the dollar store is it's so fun. There's so many things that you just want to grab. But I just wanted to show you this one because it's just adorable. And you know how I have all the crochet dogs. The eyes jiggle. But it's just a little journal that you could put your crochet notes into and it was only a dollar.